drop a can, told him to pick it up, told him to open it up, told him to take it and go around the back with it. I mean, all the things. It's with the drum. And so they knew that that's, that's the way we communicated with the drum. How did the, the slave masters know that? They could, they were having, there's always been uproars in slavery. You think there was only one uprising. No, there's many. always been many, many, many uprisings. Is that we as African people never really enjoyed slavery because we understood that slavery was a, was a, a, a kind of a social context, but Americans made it a social institution. That is, that in Africa, if a tribe, Council Nava tribe, they would take certain people and help them in their village, everybody else would go free. But in America, they, they conquered the, uh, Africans, and then they to try to, to control them by taking away all the culture base. One of the things they, they, that slave masters had, they always had an Uncle Tom or a pure nigger who would okay. then give them information. You know, they for were house niggas, too. House, oh, they I called. didn't mention them. <laughs> 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 but you see, in the same way they get information now, a classic example, you know, why is it on everybody's mind? Remember that Malcolm got in trouble because the man that the, the, that the slave master sent to check on Malcolm became Malcolm's closest friend and bodyguard. Yes. So it's always been that kind of nigger around. You know? That's the best way to put it. Yeah, well, it's always been so. That's how the slave master knew. There's always been that kind of person. I also remember Malcolm talking about the house negro and the field negro. Yeah. How the house negro was, you know, uh, tied to the to the to mm -hmm. the big house and right. the folk mm -hmm. in the big house, right. and uh, uh, as opposed to the field. The field Negro right. was quite different. I mean, he didn't care if that big house burned down. That's right. Because but the he guy, was not a part of it. But the guy that's living in the big house, I mean, he he thought he was living good and cut above mm -hmm. others. So there's always been this division. They played it, they played that very well, the division apart, that the lady who kept the children was much better than the lady who washed the floor. The lady who washed the floor was much better than the lady who cooked. The lady who taught the children much better than the lady who cooked. And all through that whole yeah, same boat. And so they, they did it in terms of treatment. They got, you know, preferential treatment. All were slaves, but they got preferential treatment based on their status in the house. Mm. Also, when you think about how the slave master during that time slept with the, the slave women. I mean, we, I know we're getting deep here, but that's how we're just telling the truth. Yeah. And how that, uh, uh, the mixed children mm. uh, also... Uh, provided division, great right, number of division, right. a great amount of division, if you will, uh, among among the black people there. They once the child, once those mixed children came out, if they came out real, real light, almost white. Then they they would ship them away to school. One of the major schools that they sent to was Appomattox Courthouse in in Virginia, which is only about a hundred miles from here. Yeah. They would go to school there, and there was a school in Louisiana. At I uh, can't think of the name of the parish, but they would either send them to Louisiana to this private school or to Virginia to these private schools. And then if they came out yellow then they would get this preferential treatment in terms of getting extra special jobs on the plantation. But if they came out real dark, then they stayed with the parents. But you know that, that in terms of the mentoring, that if, if, a, if a white woman, if a black man and a black woman get together, they can produce any color. But if a white man comes, it's automatically a black child. They're going to be these African characteristics regardless. That you know that their skin may be very light, but they still gonna have African characteristics. That is the broader nose, the thicker lips. They're always gonna be prevalent. Nothing always. to get away from it, right? You can. I think you can never get away from right. it. Because mm -hmm. that which we are, and sometimes right. we're afraid of that which we are. Right. It's been great having you here, brother, on yeah. Color Me Poetry, okay. and uh, we're looking forward to you coming back and sharing with us again, uh, and sharing so much information with us, uh, so much power, and we're gonna. We're going to look forward to all the other things that you're doing, your class also, okay. the Black right. Man Story class. Okay. And we're looking forward to that. Okay. And uh, it's been great. Thank I'm you. Danny Queen. This is Color Me Poetry. We've been talking about Kwanzaa here today, the African-American holiday. And uh, until next time, Color Me Poetry.